Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, it's been quite a week <laughs> since uh, the full moon um, in Libra that occurred, or you know, Virgo, depending on how you look at it, that occurred this past Monday. I am recording this on Sunday, the 31st of March, and as I look at my clock, it just changed from 1444 to 1445, which is pretty cool. Um, so I am here to uh, speak about some of the things that I've been intuiting some downloads, um, some things my guides have been showing me, some things I've been observing, um, as well as a very interesting incident that occurred a few days ago. Um, and I actually did do a reading on it, and I'll get into uh, into what that was all about. But first, I want to take the opportunity to welcome you. Um, welcome if you're visiting for the first time. Um, welcome if you're returning. Um, if you are here for the first time and you are attracted by the title, I do invite you to, to chill out and stay and see if there are any messages for you, and there likely will be. But, um, you know... I will always say, if you're not vibing with me, if you don't like me for whatever reason, which is fine, you know, you don't have to like me, I suggest that you um, find your messages elsewhere. And not because I have an issue with you not liking me, but because at this point in Ascension, um, we are here to uh, align in all areas of our lives and to therefore um, uh, connect ourselves frequently to those who we are in alignment with because as we do that we pull in more of that so if you are not in alignment with me and you and you're doing this with me and other readers you're you're hanging out in places where you don't frequently belong you actually are just harming your own ability to call in things that you want so I don't have to give you that um, disclaimer. It's kind of a, a, a something kind for me to do because you sticking around here where you don't belong doesn't harm me. It does harm you though on an energetic level, okay? Or it slows you down, I should say. So um, anyway, I wish you the best. I hope you do find those beings that you're in alignment with because it's time for us all to rise into our power and our true frequencies. And the more we're able to do that, the better it is for the entirety of the planet, okay? So welcome if you're returning. Welcome if you are a subscriber or a visitor or you just uh, listen, um, you're welcome here. I want to get right into this. Um, and before I say anything else, I do want to say I'm looking forward to meeting the seven of you that have signed up. I'm meeting with you in about just over an hour, so this reading will be quick um, for my Road Back to Recovery small group session. And for those of you who had expressed interest but it sold out before you were able to sign on or sign up for it, I will be doing another one in April. And so please keep your ears open um, with the, the, the videos that come up after as well as uh, on the community board. I will let you know when the next um, small group session is, specifically the Road Back to Wholeness uh, group sessions that I'm hosting as well as Tarot Astrology group Q&As, okay? So, um, so on Thursday, I came on here and I did record a reading, but I didn't post it because I was so exhausted, but I wanted to get to the bottom of something that had occurred. So on Wednesday night, um, there must have been a storm overnight that I didn't, I wasn't really privy to because I sleep with one window like open and when I woke up on Thursday morning, I had cards that had been flown off of my desk um, from the night before. And then I noticed as I, it was really funny because as I was doing the reading, all of a sudden the wind started to pick up and that storm energy moved back in. And ironically, or not so much, one of the cards that came out was that um, storm energy is needed to shift this. It was from my one of my karmic um, chronicles decks. If you guys have been rolling with me for a while, you know what those ones are about. So um, there was energy around a karmic cousin. There was energy around um, some kind of thing that had occurred with energy, uh, an energy transference ritual, whether it had been done recently or it's something that was undoing now. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's kind of the energy that was coming up. And uh, I began to realize soon after I recorded it, wait a minute, this is just, this is one story that is a reflection 
of a grander theme that is happening collectively. So why don't we dive into that? So I have been diving into it. I've been um, speaking and writing about it on Substack, um, my daily alchemy um, messages, as well as um, last night I did a word for your day audio message for my Substack patrons where I began to speak a little bit about what I'm going to talk about now. So um, we are in the midst of establishing, or I should say re-establishing, a base frequency. A base frequency or a foundation upon which we're going to build and however you start an energy is what you have to build upon it. Um, Aries season, and we are in Aries season, tropically speaking, but if you look up into the sky, the sun is still in Pisces, so both signs are working together at this point to accomplish um, where it is we're going and what it is we're doing, and that is always the case, right? Um, the sign that precedes the, uh, the, 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 the sign that precedes the sign that is in a where the sun is the moon is whatever planet it is it always carries residual energies which is why i'm not one who is too um caught up with um you know the fact that astronomically the sun or the moon are in a specific um zodiac sign versus what tropical astrology is because i still pick up on those energies because those energies are there because we don't work independently with the signs they all function together and they function together as neighbors they function together on the axes they share like sister signs and they function together in what it is that they're here to do and to accomplish for one another so a good um, example of that is virgo and scorpio actually are very interconnected their energies and this is why they even share the same kind of glyph right I won't get into that right now that's a lot of astrology talk but I want to say that because we have a very interesting energy that's happening right now as we um, and it's Piscean and Aries energy and Pisces our energy bodies are coming back online Okay, and so when you think about um, how that works in terms of how our energy bodies connect to Pisces and Aries energy, Pisces energy is very much connected to your Earth star as well as your Soul star, and Aries energy is connected to the crown and the root. So they are both signs the last sign of the zodiac and the first sign of the zodiac that are very connected to the establishment of. Um, a frequency, your frequency, the frequency that you give out to the world is established through Pisces and Aries based upon what you're holding in your fields and based upon what you choose to let go of through Pisces and what you choose to embrace through the Aries energy. So the Pisces energy, the last sign on the zodiac wheel, is all about establishing a frequency based upon what it is you've decided to walk away from, let go of, in order to either break into a higher cycle, stay in the one you're in, or to go backwards. And Aries then takes that decision you make through the Piscean energy and begins to establish it and distribute it in your energy field. So that's what you begin to give out to the world. So in other words, the frequency that you begin to establish through your Aries energy, it's not just Aries season, it's your Aries energy, because Aries is connected to your ascendant also, it's all interconnected. The energy you choose to align with through that energy is what creates your base frequency. And your base frequency is what you then build upon for the next zodiac cycle. Okay, and that doesn't mean that um, when you make a decision through Aries season, there's no way of, of going backwards, and yada, yada, yada. The moon every month as she moves through all of the signs, gives you an opportunity to tweak things, to go back to fix, etc., etc. So it's not ever like a, a, a doomsday thing. This is not about putting people into fear ever because that's not conducive to your ascending. It's just about sharing the facts so that um, you can be in a more empowered state and realize what it is that's happening energetically. And even any resistance you're facing right now might be very well based upon the fact that you are in the process of establishing 
the frequency upon which you will be building for the next year on a personal level. But this is also happening planetarily and galactically, and it's even more so pronounced because we have the nodes in Aries and Libra right now. And um, with Aries being the, the first sign of the zodiac to have uh, the nodes um, expressing themselves through, through Aries and Libra right now, that automatically means eclipse season is going to occur. Equinox will always occur through the Aries Libra energy. So I say all of that because the equinox energies are bolstered through these eclipse, um, these eclipse windows that we are uh, dealing with while the, while, um, while the North and South nodes are in Aries and Libra, respectively. So what that means is that whenever we're dealing with equinox, solstice energy, we are dealing with the energies of uh, that control the, 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 the frequency of the planet. So we're dealing with the planetary grids. And so we're dealing with... Um, we're dealing right now with how um, the grids of the earth are being brought, the grids of the true earth are being brought back online higher as the false grids of the false matrix are powered out even more. But very substantially because of the timing, equinox window, and the eclipse energies. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And then also because we're moving um, into, we've moved into the new uh, year, astrologically speaking, all of this happening um, around the same um, window of time is uh, like kicking off higher uh, planetary energies. Even um, the sun, the, 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 the solar weather is a reflection of this also. In other words, there are very, very big shifts that are occurring through this eclipse um, window and not just because it's an eclipse but because of what it means to have the nodes and specifically the north node in the first sign that rules over the zodiac wheel that opens a new cycle so you've been hearing I'm sure a lot over the past few years about how 2025 is going to be this the year the, the world is going to never be the same you know what once we enter into 2025 if ever there's an energy that's kind of like pulling us through timelines very quickly to that reality, it's through the eclipse that um, just occurred a week ago, the eclipse that is happening a week from now, and then when we have the eclipse cycle again in the fall. Okay, because everything, um, the shifting of the equinox energies is being like bolstered by the eclipse, okay? And uh, what all of this is doing is it's helping us to really uh, continue to clear the densities that keep us from accessing our cosmological truth. Now, Aries and Pisces together are the signs that help us to begin to um, bring back onto the earth planes who we are divinely. So Pisces does that by helping us to walk away from those energies that promoted the densities that were still collapsing. And Aries helps us to get our mind right. Our mind right in terms of what it is that we need to establish in the earth in accordance with who we are cosmologically. In other words, I want to make this so clear. Right now, a good example of this is for some of you, the road to immortality is opened again. Now pay attention to how you felt and the, the, the immediate thoughts and feelings that came up when I said that just now. If I said to you the road to immortality is open and you were just like, yeah, I know, then you're, you're, you're on your way there. If I said that to you and you're just like, what is this, this woman talking about? This is impossible, yada, 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 or any kind of resistance. That shows you all of the programming that must be collapsed and cleared out. Those are the densities that are keeping you from even beginning to access that that could be possible, let alone be able to reach it. However, there will be some beings who are able to reignite that reality on the earth planes and bring it back and open the door for others to do the same because that is the truth. When you are in divine alignment 
with who you are and you're not living on a prison planet and all of your resources stream to you with ease and you know how your energy field works and you're not under the parasitic um, the parasitic um, enslavement and bindings that made you sick on all levels, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, then actually you have the autonomy to look after yourself in such a way that you don't get sick. You are designed to die from disease and degeneration. These are all matrix programs that we fell for, okay? And so through this eclipse window, what a lot of you, what a lot of us are clearing are all of those deep, deep state programs that go back to, you know, when all of this shit began, because that's the kind of energy we're dealing with this year, right? I've, I've talked about this before, 2024, dealing with the root and the inception of where the false matrix began to intercept our divine wisdom and our divine autonomy and authority. It's leaving this year, it's leaving through us. And so those energies that have kept us um, separate from our divine truth, such as the fact that we don't have to die from disease and degeneration, are the things that must be collapsed within us. And this is not me saying that everyone's going to all of a sudden become immortal again. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the road to reaccess that truth is open for those who dare to walk down it and there those who dare to, to bring that back onto the earth. Okay, because there have to be some who begin to bring that back onto the earth so it can be reestablished and therefore open the door wider, energetically speaking, for others to do it. That's how energy is always birthed. Everything at one point on this earth plane was said to be impossible until a few beings dared to, to push past the fear frequencies that made others believe that it was possible. And then by their example, others could follow. And then in some cases, it just became a regular way of being and living. So um, this whole idea is, is has really been circulating a lot this week for me as uh, my guides have begun to show me how we are, our light bodies are being reactivated into a lot of the lost wisdom. And when I say our light bodies, I'm not just talking about your energy. The earth's wisdom is being um, illuminated again. The, the ports, the gates, um, the things that they locked down with their false grid system can no longer stay on lock. And as such, the earth herself is unloading her ancient primordial wisdom back to us. And those of us who are in alignment with the ability to connect with that because we either have those um, energetic gateways within our fields because of who we are, but also because we We've managed to clear enough densities to reach a frequency where we're able to now connect with that truth without resistance. Um, this is what's happening right now because a whole lot of um, like codes are streaming into the earth right now to reactivate you into the remembrance of who you are and how you do these things. And at the same time, those codes are unlocking that wisdom again in the earth so that you can truly um, anchor yourself even deeper into becoming the rainbow bridge. And the rainbow bridge energy is as above, so below. Everything is streamed through your energy field. So everything that is etheric and spiritual comes into being on the earth and the material planes through your energy, through your men through the mental planes. Which, and you're connected to those through your mind through, and, and through the uh, emotional planes. And you're connected to that, not only through your heart, but through your DNA, through all things that your waters hold. Okay? And then materially, you're connected to the earth and to her grids. So everywhere... Um, you are connected by like a grid-like system and your and your energy field runs grids also that connect you to the grids above and the grids below, as well as, um, I don't know how to explain this, it's like um, intercepting uh, grids that uh, connect you to things cosmically in accordance with who you are divinely. Okay, and um, and what it is you came here to do, and the gifts and the talents you came here to bring, it's all 
um, it all can be um, explained through how you connect. I hope that makes sense. So um, what was I going to say about that? I was going to say something and I forgot. Anyway, your light bodies are coming back online and you're going to have a few instances of, um, of, of powerful light body activations that occur. Um, now, cancer season, <laughs> as we enter into the next cardinal sign, the first water cardinal sign, the establishment of your waters now, um, uh, to reflect the energies you set through Aries and then of course through the eclipse window that happens again I think probably around Libra season I would imagine. Okay so all of that aside I want to share with you some of the downloads I've been getting and even the things I've been seeing and witnessing. The windows to karmic restitution and retribution are opening wider. The windows to karmic restitution and retribution are opening wider. What does that mean? That means that first and foremost, because your ability to become a conscious creator um, is coming back on board in more, in ways that align with your cosmic truth and your cosmological identity, you are designed to be able to uh, call things in like this. You shouldn't have to necessarily always have to wait. The waiting is a reflection. The waiting, the time lag, is a reflection of um, the mental programming that had us um, stuck in the matrix whereby things ran a lot slower. Okay? Um, so, you have, in other words, you have the ability to instantly manifest. And some of you have been seeing this for years um, in glimmers, but maybe you couldn't get it to um, you couldn't get it to happen all the time. But you're supposed to be able to 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 connect with that ability all the time for as long as you're in alignment, right? Uh, divine alignment, and I mean for as long as what it is you're creating is not something that is in detriment to your own soul or that of another or the earth, okay? Um, that ability is coming back online faster as the grids of, uh, the, the, the true grids above reconnect with the true earth grids and the false grids of the matrix are pulled out even more your ability to do that is being established. And it's because that is occurring that the window for instant manifestation is, is happening faster, which also means um, instant, what they call karma. And karma is just a lesson and a rebalancing of scales in accordance with the new balance that's going to be set based upon the decisions that beings have made. Okay, karma is not this thing that judges people who are bad, and it's not how it works. Now, there are laws, um, universal laws that you're not supposed to break, and in that sense, karma comes in, in grander ways, and yet karma is always our own souls judging us also, if that makes sense, because when a person hurts another being, when your enemy hurts you and they think they're getting away with something, they're ultimately only reaping that um, energy for themselves for as long as you don't tie in to that energy and allow them to use you as some kind of a scapegoat. They are actually opening the door to their own demise. And so I say that because through the fuckery of the matrix, we had all been scapegoated. Um, to various degrees. So there was a lot of karmic transference. That was one of the cards that were coming up where beings were not taking responsibility for their karmic loads and therefore putting it on other beings. And those were the ones who were, uh, quote unquote, in power, in charge. It's why the majority of the earth was suffering while some beings were, you know, living la-di-da lifestyles. That's not how it was designed. 
And they did that through a lot of container um, magic and putting this planet on lockdown, getting us stuck in cycles, running around ourselves, um, and, and, and causing ourselves to be in a, a lower frequency because we didn't know what was happening. Those, the, the ability, in other words, for the karmic transference energy, it's no longer possible collectively. The only way it's possible for these beings to put their karma, their illnesses, their misfortune, their lack, um, their debts upon you materially, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually is if you yourself are in alignment with that frequency still because of what you think about yourself or um, you know, you thinking an energy is bigger than you or someone's out to get you. It might all be true, but if you give them that power of believing that they have something over you, then you keep the door open for the cycle of, um, of, of them harvesting you to continue. And this is where right now we're shutting it down because on an energetic level collectively on the planet, once upon a time, because of how they had set the matrix, the, uh, the matrix, um, the, the uh, energy of the planet supported um, that fuckery. It supported it, which is why you couldn't get a break. But now, because of the shifts that have occurred over m many years and even decades, you know, um, the planet no longer is under lockdown, frequentially speaking. So beings who continue to stay in karmic suffering, it's either because they're choosing not to do the work or you're still clearing the densities that connect you to certain cycles, but your ability to climb now back into your uh, limitless reality, it's now open. And so therefore the only barrier between you accessing this limitless potential now is going to be you. Whereas once upon a time, it was all these energies, all of this resistance, um, all of the planetary um, lockdown schemes that they had enforced upon us. Right now, what they're dealing with, and, and I want to be careful when I say this, because that doesn't mean that what you're experiencing in terms of resistance from the um, the, the powers that were and from those beings in your life that were running those programs, those agent smiths, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean you're not dealing with warfare. It doesn't mean you're not dealing with resistance from other beings and energies that don't want you to rise. But I want you to know that um, those are still spells that are circulating that aren't rooted, that the energy, the foundational energy that once upon rooted um, those spells and those, um, they are like a time release um, matrix spells. So when you get to a certain level, boom, you, you get pushed back down, right? When you climb up now, you will still encounter those spells. They are still there, but they are not... Um, they are like, um, I was explaining this to a person the other day, a client the other day, that it's like, you know that scene in Home Alone? Oh, I, this was with my group session last Sunday. You know that scene in Home Alone where um, Macaulay Culkin is, um, he knows that they're coming to try and rob the house, and so he wants to pretend like... Um, everyone's home for Christmas and so he gets all of his like cardboard cutouts his and his brothers he gets them and he puts them on this like his train set and they're going back and forth and creating shadows and he's playing the music really loudly so through the window it, it appears in the house as if something's happening but the minute those those robbers if they walked if they had been able to um, to recognize that it was an illusion, um, the minute they'd gotten closer to the house, it would have been over. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not a real threat. It feels real. It appears to be real. But the minute you allow your mind to tune into the fact that it actually is a density that has to be collapsed by you tuning into the fact that it's an illusion designed to disempower, discourage, put you in fear, etc., etc., the faster that thing must uh, collapse and leave. In other words, the minute that somebody sends you a spell nowadays and you realize that the spell that they're sending you, that it can't stay in your fields anymore, 
and you don't align with the energies that they need for that spell to be manifested in your reality is the minute that spell starts to phase out because it has nothing it has nothing to cling to in your energy and it has nothing that it's rooted into anymore. It's just like free flying energy that's there to cause you um, disruption and distortion. But if you're able to grab a hold of it, boom, it disintegrates. And when I say it disintegrates, I mean it cannot even come back to you at that point because it's so weak. I hope that makes sense. So from an energetic principle, if something doesn't have a foundation, it can't be set. And the foundation that once upon set these spells into your reality don't exist. So when they come flying, they're flying without a foundation or a root. And it's up to you because they've already been uprooted to like poof, destroy them with your mind, with your, and when I say your mind, I'm talking about what you choose to align with in terms of what you believe. So. If a spell is supposed to come to you because some being needs you to believe that you are inferior and you and to put you in a state of shame about yourself and self-rejection in order to harvest you for your confidence, for your golden frequency, for your sacral energy, whatever it is they're coming after you for. If when that energy comes towards you, you refuse to bow down to the story they need you to not only believe but own, that spell is as good as done, okay? And every time you do that, you're just, you're annihilating the wholeness of the energy because it has no root anyway. I hope I'm making sense here, okay? So it's for that reason, all of these things that are occurring energetically, this is the reason why the window to karmic restitution and retribution are opening wider because beings who are not living consciously at this point, the lessons they have to learn in order to get into a state of no longer betraying themselves are going to come quicker for them. And to us, it seems like, oh, it's karmic justice. But really what it is, is it's their own soul trying to get them to come into alignment with where they need to be so they don't completely perish. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, beings that have been harming you and fucking around in your energy and haven't been using this ascension to tune into their power because they've been too busy trying to steal yours, the more they try to do that consciously and unconsciously at this point, for as long as you're not falling for the stories they needed you in before in order for that those spells to take, their... Um, their karmic realities are crumbling quicker because what supported the um, structures of their, of their deception was keeping you trapped in a lie. And once you're no longer in a lie, then they have to face the truth. I hope that makes sense. So um, there is a life force recoup that is occurring through the air. I want to say it's going to be very... Um, profoundly felt through the Aries and the Taurus windows. So even through Gemini season, because it depends on, on how you align with the Aries and the Taurus energy on a personal level. Um, so if you are vibing with the sun being in Aries right now, then it's now and an, an next, um, next zodiac sign, which is Taurus uh, cycle. But for those of you who are still aligning with the sun in Pisces, then it's going to be when the sun moves into Aries for you. Okay, um, contrary to popular belief, although we share collective energies, we are still connected to the planets on a very personal basis and level. In other words, just because a person is connected to the sun in Aries right now, it doesn't make them wrong versus a person who's connected with the sun in Pisces. It's a personal decision. Both of those can be honored, even though the sun is actually in Pisces. And this is not based upon me just saying things to be saying things. I'm saying it because eventually there will there will be a collapsing into the oneness fields of all things, including the disparities that have caused astrology to be the way it is. But because the collective story still supports the sun being in Aries, that energy is still very strong. That planetary connection um, on the earth is still very strong. Everything is energy, guys. Whatever you put your attention towards, especially collectively, it grows it. 
I hope that makes sense. So it's not, it's never really an issue of um, judging and someone's right and someone's wrong. It's where is your consciousness directing things? And I know that's a little bit out there. I don't want to get too into it right now because I've got to run in a couple of minutes. But um, there is a big life force recoup that's coming through this um, eclipse window, but especially through Aries and Taurus seasons. Um, there is a reinvigorating of the true crystalline and molecular structures of both our bodies and the earth. Let's say that again. There is a reinvigorating of the crystalline and molecular structures of our bodies and the earth. And why is that? Because through the Pisces energy, our, our waters are recalibrated in accordance with what it is we've chosen for ourselves. And it is through the waters that everything is birthed. Okay, and this is also affecting a lot of you on the physical level. Those of you who have been, and I spoke about this two readings ago, those of you who've been dealing with a lot of physical purging, through these cycles, it is because literally you are, the gates of your DNA are being reconnected to the gates on the earth planes that help you to be back in alignment with your cosmological truth on earth as it is in the heavens. Your DNA, they're in your waters, okay? Um, your DNA literally are gates and gateway systems. If you've ever seen a strand of DNA as it's been illustrated or even under a microscope, you'll see what I mean. There are gates, um, there are uh, segues even, okay? Uh, your DNA, everything on an, on an in energy works on the macro and the micro level. What is in the macro has to be the micro. This is what I mean when I say that um, without a root, without a foundation, an energy can't survive because it's it's already dissipating. It's all because the macro is there, but the micro that allows to lock it in isn't there. So locking things in, that's a good, good, good turn of phrase right now because that's what's happening. You're being locked into your truth, locked into your true uh, frequency, and therefore you're being locked out of the old world also. And in that, the beings who had access to your keys are no longer able to do that because the, the more you root yourself in your own energy, and this is the highest form of protection, the more grounded and rooted you are in your energy, the less these these things can come in to attack you. Um, and this is what I was talking about two readings ago, how for some of you, it's time for you to make your bodies inhospitable to these parasitic energies. Because once you take control of your environment and you kick out these energies and entities on all levels, then even when they come back, they can't chill out because they'll die. Because the environment they need to support their lifespan no longer exists in you. And this is ultimately what you've been doing on all levels. You've been doing it spiritually by, by first and foremost waking up and realizing all of the spells and the fuckery that you were, you were under and beginning to clear that. Then you were doing it mentally by no longer aligning your mind to the programs that were designed to cause you to, to be connected to those spells or to cause you to betray yourself or to cause you to reject and neglect yourself, right? So um, you're making, you were making your mental body inhospitable to the mental energies, the projections, the spells, the programs that needed to exist in your mental reality for you to continue to manifest something false that supported the spell work and the programs. And then emotionally, this has been a big year of emotional clearing, right? And it will continue to be that for some, right? And for many of you, it's shifting now to the physical, but with the emotional, you're dealing with the wounds, the triggers, the things that, um, you know, are the automatic responses to um, experiences and energies based upon the trauma timelines and the fuckery and the repetition. That's the clearing of the emotional body. 
to the point where when these things start to come your way, they don't move you the way they used to because you're grounded now in your truth and in your emotional strength and in your emotional wisdom that you've gotten back through facing yourself in the darkest of moments and calling that stuff back, doing the decree work if that's what you did, you know, doing for emotional um, collapsing, working with the waters. And now for many of you, it's down to the physical, it's down to your physical body. Some of you might have been doing parasite cleanses clearing your energy, learning about how your body actually functions. Because none of us were told, in truth, how our bodies actually work in order for us to continue regenerating ourselves. Like I said, you were not put here to die of disease and, de and, and degeneration. You are perfectly, you are um, an organism, your body is a living organism that knows how to replenish and rejuvenate itself when you know how to make it work. Everything in the matrix was designed to get you to open yourself up to intrusion on all levels, including your body. And most sicknesses, diseases, illnesses, especially lifestyle um, diseases that promote oxidative stress and meta metabolic dysfunction, are all about your body system being invaded by foreign articles that don't belong in there, from the foods to the waters, to the parasites and the bacteria and the viruses and the fungi and the toxins that are able to live and feast upon you because of the food, the water, and the lack of, of, of wisdom or intelligence in terms of us knowing who we are, not from lack of want, but from, from the programming. Now it's time for those of you who are dealing with it on a physical level to make that, to make your body inhospitable to those intruders. So you got to work on every plane in order to come back into alignment. You must make your spiritual reality inhospitable to those energies. You must make your mental reality inhospitable to those intruding energies. You must make your emotional fields inhospitable and then you must make your physical fields inhospitable and when you have completely eradicated all of those intruders on all planes then anytime someone tries to intrude your energy with a spell with a lie with a look with a foreign object your energy becomes like um bulletproof glass boom it repels it. It doesn't touch you. It can't anymore. Because you've built up your personal defenses and you've taken back your life force. And when I say that through this window of Aries and Taurus that your life force is being recouped, that's what I'm talking about. Your true defense mechanisms that are only there when you are in your own energy recovered and you have made yourself inhospitable to all those other energies and entities on every plane, then your life force begins to support you, your defenses. Everything that you deal with, energetically speaking, is shown to you. So it's shown to you even in how your body combats sickness. Okay, so um, we live in a false matrix that made us afraid of the very things that are designed to protect us. So for an example, a fever. A fever is your body's intelligence saying, hold up a second, there's some foreign invader, okay? There's a virus, there's a bacteria, there's a something in the system that we, we, we gonna kick out, okay? That's your body saying that, oh, we gonna raise the temperature on this bitch. We're going to raise the temperature to make sure that that thing can't survive. And what does Western medicine tell you to do? Fever reducer, which means that the toxin, the energy, the bacteria can stay and you reduce the fever and you, you begin the process of making your energy hospitable to it. And you get better, right? The fever goes. And now this thing is moving in and it starts calling in more of its friends and you don't realize that you're accumulating disease over time 
because you're not actually getting rid of the toxin and the bacteria. It's just uh, colonizing you and finding ways to live in you where it doesn't disturb you until it does. That's what I'm talking about. So what you're doing now is you are you are bringing back those defenses, those natural defenses you have that are your God-given right, energetically speaking, on all planes are returning to you. So once upon a time when these foreign energies would enter into your fields on the, on, in the spiritual, you were oblivious. All of us were oblivious. Um, mentally, we were oblivious because we thought other people's thoughts about us were our own. Oh, you think I'm a fool? Oh, okay, that's because I think I'm a fool. So that must be my thought, right? Wrong, wrong. Divinely aligned, you know you're the shit. And anything that comes against that truth is actually the lie. Okay, so... Um, once upon a time, another person's thoughts towards you would enter your fields and you could take it on as your own. Another being's emotions and what they were going through, you'd start to feel things and not even realize it wasn't your own because you weren't um, in your energy yet. Illness would enter your fields and you wouldn't even realize what its strategy was because you didn't know, because you were purposely programmed to be ignorant so that you would continually open yourself to higher death cycles that cause degeneration. And now you're locking all the death cycles down, the untimely death cycles. You're bringing all that shit back into harmony where life and death happens the way it's supposed to happen for the purpose of rejuvenation, regeneration, and harmonization, as opposed to destruction of you, which was the Matrix's agenda and all of those who supported it. And in doing so, you're bringing back your natural defenses on all planes. So when those energies try to enter your fields now, you know instantly there's an alarm. Wait a minute, where did that thought? I was, I was chilling here for a second and all of a sudden I'm starting to feel down on myself. Where did that come from? Oh, okay, well that must be someone else's projection towards me. That might be some spell work. That might be because I'm out and about and somebody's sending me evil eye, but I know for sure it ain't mine. So I ain't accepting it into my system. I ain't going to brood over it and act from it because it's not mine. I'm going to let that energy die in my system because it's an intruder, right? So that's those of you who have managed to do that mentally. When an energy enters your fields, that's not in alignment with who you are. You know, it's not yours. So then you push it out, piss off, you don't belong here, right? And emotionally, when you start to feel something that's not in alignment with how you're feeling, you know now, it's not you. It's not you. Same thing is happening on all planes. So through this uh, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, window, you could say, those three signs, a lot of this is occurring to help you to, 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 for the life force to come back that is necessary for you to be more rooted in your true energy, to raise up your defense mechanisms. And as you raise up your defense mechanisms, you are grounding your cosmological truth on the earth planes with more power. Okay, so your, like I've, I've said to you guys before, your Ability to be protected is always based upon your moving deeper into your power, into your truth, into your energy. The more you are making decisions that honor your energy, the more your natural defenses return. It's like um, once you begin to realize what foods are killing your immune system, and you start to X those out and you start to eat the things that are designed to help you to your natural defense systems to, to, to come back into play, to fight disease, viruses, um, you know, bacteria, let's just call them intruders, to fight the intruders that want to come into your energy to, to feast and to feed. Once you figure out how to eat, how to do the practices, that allow for you to um, create your defense systems, your defense systems grow. And when those energies try to come in, those um, those things, like you go and you eat something that is, uh, that, uh, you know, um, 
goes against your natural defenses, you feel it instantly. So for some of you, you go and eat some fast food right now, you'll be on the toilet for two days because your body rejects it fully now because your defense systems are too high to hold on to it. Whereas once upon a time, you may have been a fast food warrior, you know, but your body no longer promotes that energy. It no longer supports it. It spits it out. It's poison. It's not, you're not going to stay in my vessel. I hope I'm making sense. So, um, this is all happening because of the reinvigoration that's occurring of the true crystalline and molecular structures of our bodies and earth. So in other words, the more we are making ourselves inhospitable to, um, inhospitable to these intruding energies that were connected to the false matrix and its programs that were designed to constantly destroy us, the more we are building our resistance, our natural resistance and defenses, we are actually calling back our true um, molecular design that, 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 um, that helps us to once again walk on this earth as a supernatural beings that we always have been. And we're not supernatural. So what they call supernatural is our organic truth. They just want you to think it's so far out there, but it's not. And as we um, continue to clear ourselves of those densities and those lies that make us believe that, the more we are recalibrating the molecular structures of our own waters back into alignment with who we actually are. And this is happening on the earth also. It's a, what happens to us happens to the earth. What happens to the earth happens to us. We are one and the same. So in other words, the molecular structures of the waters will return back to being life-giving springs. This is what this is opening the door to, the regeneration of Mama Earth, okay? And um, when I say the regeneration, um, that can occur in different ways because there are some beings who, who believe that, you know, there's an Earth that is, um, the new Earth is separate from the old Earth, physically speaking, or it will become separate physically. And I did see... Um, my guides had shown me that happening and how it was happening through like, um, I spoke about this in January, through what we call like uh, mitosis or watching a cell divide and how that occurs through the fission process. That's what's been occurring to our earth. And so um, as we rejuvenate and as we replenish and as we align our frequency with true or new earth frequencies, that's where um, we're being pulled until eventually that will be our full on reality. That's how I've been seeing it. Um, yeah. So what is a frequency will be materialized because that's how energy works. So anyway, I've got to run. I hope that this, uh, well, it wasn't a reading. These downloads and uh, this sharing was helpful for those of you who are working your way through these energies and trying to make sense of it all. I'm sending you so much love, um, wishing you a wonderful holiday weekend uh, for those of you who have a holiday weekend, um, wherever you are in the world. And yeah, I will see you again soon. For all information on how to work with me, you can check me out on my website, solara.info. I want to say thank you so much to those of you who have uh, made donations to myself, to the channel. It's really kind and generous of you and it doesn't go unnoticed. I so appreciate it. It helps me to do what it is that I do for the collective and um, it does not go without appreciation. So thank you. Thank you to those of you who um, I released the egg cleansing manual on my Ko-Fi and it is there for free but you have the option if you want to purchase it or to make a donation instead to do that also thank you to all of you who instead of choosing to have it for free made donations that was really very very kind and generous of you um for those of you who would like to donate um, to the channel and to myself, you can do so through my Ko-Fi and my PayPal. That information, including my website details and how you can join me on Substack if you're interested in supporting me over there um, or receiving uh, information over there as a free member. All of that will be in the description box and the in the comment section pinned below.
So I will see you guys again soon. Please look after yourself. That's the most important thing you can do to help the planet right now is to return to your own energy and to do what it is you have to do in order to support that. So um, I got a lesson in that this week. Everything in me wanted to come on here and to record and I just wasn't feeling like I was in my energy to do it. And um, and so I had to keep on delaying, you know, but the, the ultimately um, we're doing a grander service for the collective when we make those difficult decisions and we choose ourselves over like disappointing other people or whatever the reason might be, you know, the algorithm, whatever the reason might be, you know, so um, the more you honor yourself, the more you make your field inhospitable to those external energies that have been influencing you out of your power. And this goes for, for all things in all ways. So um, yeah, I'll, I'm sending you guys love and I will see you again soon. Take care.